time to start. Oops. I'm still getting spooky mail from a card exchange from Kelsey's Patreon. Adorable. Let me show you the cutest sticker ever. It's a sloth witch on a broom. Cutest ever. I love it. Oh my god, there's an elephant ghost. Cute. Too cute. I'm gonna open this up. This is from Claude over at A Geek Reads. He was offloading a couple uh, horror paperbacks. I've seen a few of those catch my eyes. They sent them my way, but I think you threw some other stuff in here. Don't appreciate that. May the great pumpkin bring you all the Halloween fun you can. Yes, I love the great pumpkin. We believe in the great pumpkin for sure. Uh, there's some extra treats in this Halloween box, of course. Ugh. Oh, what's this? I got a Dracula. Ooh, dare I open it? Are you supposed to open these? Looks like a pog. You remember pogs from back in the day? I'm gonna open it. Okay, yeah, definitely some fun stuff in here. <laughs> I love it. Look at the blood spatter on the face. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Thank you, my goodness. I was expecting like three books. Oh, look at this Halloween goodie bag. Mm -hmm. Cute little witchy Pez. This must be a newer one. I used to really collect the hell out of Pez. Oh, little mini Pez. Look at this guy. Oh, it's an owl. Sorry, there's probably a lot of crinkly noise. Oh, look at... Shut up. I haven't seen these in forever. I want to shock your lord. Oh, a zombie? Ooh, then use that for zombie fun. Oh, I'm with a Friday the 13th button. What? I was not expecting all these goodies. <gasps> Spooky spider, lots of stickers. Oh my gosh. You have spoiled me. Mm -hmm. Disney pins. <laughs> I was, he went, he did, well, he recently did a pin video where it, like his, some of his, <gasps> look at the Woody. I love Toy Story and I love Woody. Oh, I can't figure out which way this one goes. Oh, it's a shoe. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what this was. It's a shoe. It's like, it's kind of blurry, but it's like, um, not like Maleficent, I'm thinking. Or what is that? Anyway. <gasps> Thank you. There's another zombie. Blah. I love stuff like this. Stop. Fun stickers. Oh, and a tattoo? I'll put that on a Halloween. Another tattoo. I'll give that one to my kid. Goosebumps. Goosebumps cards. Stop mm. it. I have been spoiled. I've been spoiled. Book two people are the best people. Okay, this is what I was expecting. The Al, Sal Al San Antonio books. So he was just offloading these. Oh my god. Oh my god. I thought they were Look what what is, what is what is going on in here? So the San Antonio books, mm -hmm. Horroween and Halloween Land. Mm -hmm. These sound fun. And look, another uh, San Antonio book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tones. <gasps> There's a Ferris wheel. Carnival appears overnight for a good car Carnival readathon next year. On the old Scott property, Ferris wheel, Mirror Maze, Midway, Town of Love. Cold, monstrous eyes glare down as the calliope's bright music beckons through the carnival's mm -hmm. wrought iron gates. Mm -hmm. Once inside, there's no escape from terror from the dance of death. <gasps> okay, that sounds fun. What's this one? The Religion by Nicholas Conde. 
someone is killing the children, it is evil, of course. It is murder. But some see it as a necessary sacrifice from which only good will come. And no one must be allowed to stop this pattern of death before it's completed. That sounds amazing. And the legacy. <gasps> There's a cat! There's a cat on the cover. Million copy bestseller now, a sensational universal movie, The Legacy, The Birthright of Living Death. From, oh my God, John Coyne, oh my God. I know my John Coyne story. Isn't it John Coyne? He wrote the Searing, right? That book. That was the book, a novel by John Coyne based on the story by Jimmy Sangster. Have I seen this movie, Sam Elliott? Okay. Roger Daltrey's in it? I don't know that I've seen this movie. So, six came to claim it. Six beautiful people arrive for a weekend in the country. Six guests of the unseen host who lies uh, wasting away upstairs. Five heirs to a mysterious legacy watch their body of the watch the body of the sixth float to the side of the pool. Four claim the unspeakable power of the legacy while a red stain spreads across the ceiling. Three realize that the legacy has come to claim them while outside a dog dines on a thing that was once a man. And then there are two. <gasps> okay, so I could use I could read this next month for novelization November. I really want to look at this book. Or the movie. I don't is this not ringing a bell? Sam Elliott. <sighs> we were talking about VHS! Oh my gosh, you have spoiled me. You have spoiled me, Claude. You, you did not have to send all this stuff. But look at the smile, oh my gosh. You brought a smile to my face. October is rough for me for whatever reason. I don't know why. <laughs> this has really, this has really brought me some joy. Thank you so much, really. <laughs> oh, we used to have all of these growing up, all of these, and I think my mom, you know, I think we got rid of them all, a lot of them, because, you know. <laughs> oh my God, I love the Lion King. I am, I am so touched. I will send you a message too, but. First of all, you gotta subscribe to his channel. It's vastly underrated. He's amazing. And I'll link it below. And thank you. Oh my gosh. What an awesome start to the weekend. Look at this guy again. Yeah. Alright. I'll check in later. Okay, it's ramen for dinner tonight. Because it's Friday night. That's what's for dinner for me. Uh, I forgot to actually mention when I was on the opener. But I did actually listen to the audiobook for... Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. Norman Partridge today at work. That's good. Perfect for um, Halloween reading, right? So it takes place on Halloween night. Um, it's in this like small town setting where like something something's going on. There's a bit of kind of like urban legend feel wrapped up with like some folk horror almost kind of bits. Um, yeah, this thing was like Sawtooth Jack, the October boy, who's like this pumpkin headed. Mm -hmm bean that comes you know around every halloween and uh teenage boys are sent out to like capture it capture him every every year essentially i don't know i don't say too much because i feel like bless you know the more fun you have with it and yeah it's really fun uh we're following one of the you know main one of the main kids as he's going around i don't know it was <laughs> it was good very atmospheric for the time you know for this time of year with so close to Halloween. Yeah, I really liked it. It was, you know, town secrets. See, things like secrets that are unveiled. Like, that's my thing. I love that kind of story. So, um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. So, I'm kicking off my Halloween reading. Pretty good. All right. So, yeah, I'm gonna eat dinner. All right. So, wearing my lock, shock, and barrel shirt today. How do you like your noodles, Rum? I like mine a little, just a little, you know, medium, medium kind of texture.
Alrighty guys, hi, checking in. It is a little bit later in the evening on Saturday. Um, almost six o'clock now, I think. Um, I read a few little short Halloween themed romances. Let's talk about it really quickly. So first up, I read Halloween Wars by Denise Wheatley. This one was a really sweet one, very clean kind of romance story. So if you don't like Smutty Smut, this one will be for you. It's super cute. It's um, um, this you know, the small town, I think it was called like Hallow Field or something like that. It was very, Hallow, Hallow Veal, something like that. A uh, really cute little small town and Halloween is like a big deal where people, uh, there's a big contest for, um, People decorate their house and stuff, and there's it's like a big deal, right? And so we're following the main lady, whose name is Joy, who's like divorced and has like a teenage son. And, um, you know, normally things are good for her, um, you know, with the lady across the street. They're normally really good friends, until when Halloween rolls around. And they are really competitive <laughs> with each other as far as wanting to win the best decorated house. So that's kind of what's going on between... The, the two the, the two women they're they live across the street from each other their their kids are friends that's the whole thing but a new man has rolled into town also recently divorced also has the teenage daughter who you know they become he becomes wrapped up in the being a voting on the war on the um decorations and stuff and he you know maybe he enjoy connect as divorcees and have a little romance. It, like I said, it's not smutty or anything at all. It's just a really cute little Halloween little love story. Really sweet. <laughs> uh, but then I got a little bit dirty. And we're in, we'll, we'll read a couple more. So Hayseed by Vera Valentine. Um, if you're looking for Scarecrow Smut, this one is for you. We're following a young woman. She's about 21 years old, pretty young. She's looks like her both her parents have died. She's inherited like this farm. She lives on a farm. And she's seeing this boyfriend who's like a total son of a bitch. Like really abusive, honestly. And then there's this like this big kind of like harvest festival that this little, you know, town or whatever is doing. And um the boyfriend gets way out of hand and ends up hitting the, the woman i'm drawing a blanket her name right now Maisie or something like that uh and um because of course it is Maisie. i just just put two and two together there she she has a corn farm anyway uh maybe it's just me <laughs> it's uh <laughs> so she's running away from her asshole boyfriend after she decked him in the face because she's like, okay, this was the final straw. Anyway, and lo and behold, she runs up on um, somebody in her cornfield. He walks around with like a magic glowing jack-o'-lantern. And maybe they get busy in the cornfield. Dun, 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 dun. Maybe his manhood is corn cob-ish. Got a little weird. We learned some lore about this man, though. Kind of interesting. <laughs> it was fun. I don't know. Uh, and then I, <laughs> I just finished riding the headless horseman. Yes, this is by Mon Molly Likovic. Likovic, and this one was actually surprisingly really fun and um, straight up smutty, but also pretty interesting. So it does take place in smoke. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, the little town of Sleepy Hollow, and our main lady, her name's like Arletta, and she is, she is a witch that lives in Sleepy Hollow, and um, so it's how she kind of makes her living with witchy stuff, um, but, you know, most of the people in Sleepy Hollow really fall for the Headless Horseman, like, being an actual thing, and, like, being this, like, harbinger of death and all this kind of thing, she's like, I just don't believe it, there's just no way, right? <laughs> Until that one night, she walks out alone and crosses the bridge. And there he is, the Headless Horseman. Da, 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 da. He kidnaps her because he, like, is attracted to her right away. Takes her over to his, like, Headless Horseman land. <laughs> and they get a little saucy from there. Um, and that honestly was actually pretty, yeah, like I said, it was pretty good. I really liked this one. And um, it was it was interesting. I liked the kind of lore that they built around the Headless Horseman. Like, he's not just a Headless Horseman. Like, why he was headless and all that kind of stuff and what his sort of, you know, role was with, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Anyway, yeah, well, I'm surprisingly a little good time with that one. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is what I'm reading till the end of the month. It's just Halloween stuff. 
besides this, because I wanted to read this this month because it's a new horror, a newish horror manga. It's called The Summer That Hikaru Died. I don't know if it's Hikaru or Hikaru. Hikaru, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> this is by Moku Moku Rin. Um, and yeah, I just kind of want to get into it and see how kind of spooky maybe it was going to get. Um, so basically Hikaru, who's this guy here, had, had went missing. He went to like the mountains and he went missing. And some, but someone has returned like a, and, but like maybe it's not really him. You know, so his friend here is like kind of the only one who's kind of seen this, I think. So I've just started it. So we're getting into the nitty gritty. It is labeled as a more of a teen kind of YA book, so maybe we'll see how spooky it gets. I don't know, I just kind of wanted to get into it. I get uh, read some horror manga this month. I thought it would be fun. We will see. So I got that. Um, I definitely want to get into this at some point before the end of the month. We've got a few days. Uh, the, what's it called again? The Haunted Halloween by Irene Schultz. This is just perfect. It has this weird glare. You know, so spooky Halloween night, looks like. Some weird men s sitting in this car. I don't know. We'll see. This is just a little middle grade book. But I just want to get into that and then just see. Just see where we go from there. All right. I'll check in later. Not a single 17 album at Target. I'm really kicking myself in the butt for not pre-ordering these albums. <laughs> I'm gonna see if Barnes & Noble has maybe a copy or two. <laughs> Something about walking around the mall. No stores are open. <laughs> friends it was a journey but they had all four versions there I bought them all Barnes and Noble exclusives comes with a, an exclusive bookmark fun um, I'm so excited you guys do, I don't I express my love for Seventeen. I I don't know that I can. They're definitely an old fave, and I love them so much. I'm really, really hoping for another world tour after you know the release of this album. You know, hopefully maybe like next year. Because <sighs> I feel like some of the older members will start will then kind of start going to mil do their military service. So I'm hoping for like one more kind of tour. Ugh, because I'm going wherever the hell they're going, I'm, I'm going to buy me a ticket go some damn where to see them. Anyway. <sighs> okay. Also, read what you own challenge, right? So I'm not rebuying any books, which just means more money for K-pop albums. Am I right? <laughs> yeah.
All right, hey guys. So it is Sunday evening. And so yeah, winding down for the evening. I did finish this, this manga, the summer that Hikaru died. Again, this is by Moki Mokurin. Moku Mokurin. Um, I really liked this. Definitely something strange going on. So this, I think I talked a little bit about it, but this kid, Hikaru has gone had went kind of up into the mountains and um, I think was missing for a little bit, but he comes back, but he's he's like not he's not this guy. He's not Hikaru anymore. And his friend, uh, his friend Yoshiki, he knows. He knows something's up and things are starting to happen around town. Some odd things are going on. I don't know. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, especially like at the very end it was like oh, some really cool kind of horror imagery so i saw that definitely think this is more leans toward it definitely a darker from horror leaning manga um i'm really excited i really would like to get volume two read what you own challenge but i don't know <laughs> and then volume three i think is releasing next year so um yeah really really liked this really liked the artwork um one thing I, one thing I'll say is the translation itself seemed a little weird. The way some of the words were translated, there's a lot of sort of like, he ain't gonna go over there. No, <laughs> I don't know. Some of the, some of the wording that they chose translated seemed a little off, <laughs> a little weird to me. But, but the story itself was really good. So yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Spooky, spooky. I think that's, I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll check in later. It's Tuesday, so happy Halloween, and um, we are, um, our, my household is down with COVID, so happy Halloween. The scariest thing that you could imagine has happened, <laughs> uh, but really though, we've, uh, we've avoided it this long, so I guess, I don't know, is it just inevitable that everyone will get it at some point now? I don't know, but anyway, so I sound a little nasally, <laughs> so... So yes, of course, we're just out of work, out of school, just going to be hanging out. So all day yesterday, of course, you know, we, we took our test yesterday. So uh, all day yesterday, I just sat around and I read books all day and we just did nothing. My kid was on his tablet all day. Whatever, you know, <laughs> it's a sick day. This is what we do. Um, I read mostly Halloween smut all day because that's what I do when I'm sick. I guess I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I guess so. <laughs> but first, I did start the day, though, reading The Haunted Halloween by Irene Schultz. Uh, this is part of a series. Um, let's see, the, the Woodland Mysteries. And there's also another series with these woodland people. <laughs> so the woodlands are these, I don't know, they're all orphans, really. And this lady named Miss, what's her name? Miss Tandy somehow takes care of all of them. I guess I'm gonna need to read book one to figure out the origin story, but I think they're all, they, all the kids are orphans and they've all somehow lived all together now. I don't, I don't know, it was the 80s. <laughs> that's what, that's how kids lived back then. Um, 
<clears throat> so you see there's quite a, f a lot of books in the Woodland Mystery series. Um, and this was actually written in 96, so whatever. Anyway, let me get my camera right. Okay. And it was a cute little story. I, I, it was perfect for Halloween. It takes place on, uh, you know, around Halloween. Um, it gives me like, actually kind of like Home Alone vibes because there's these guys like scoping out the, the, their neighborhood and obviously up to no good, right? So it gives me like, <laughs> like the Home Alone when they're like looking at that, when the bandits are, you know, checking out the neighborhood before everybody leaves for Christmas. It kind of <laughs> like gave me those vibes. Um, and so, and then our kids, well, the bulk of the bulk of them is them trying to make a haunted house in their basement for Halloween. Um, and so they're like working to get everything together and all that kind of good stuff. While also dealing with like this weird car driving around the neighborhood. Things happen, you know, yada, yada. It's, a, it's just a fun little Halloween mystery. Um, perfect. I mean, just absolutely perfect for the time of year. And the cover, I mean, the cover is really great. So... Uh, so it was fun. It was a fun little, it was a fun little read. So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then I just went for it. So the first up I read by Layla Fay. I read Carved, um, and Jacked. So this is a series. The third book comes out today. I'm going to try to read it. Um, by Layla Fay. I think I read, I read something by Layla Fay. She read that Jack book with the yeah, I read that already. I like the, I like her stuff. Uh, this is a really dark series. Really dark series. Um, please check the content warnings for this one. Okay, if you don't like dark, sexy times, you won't like this. Okay, we've our main character is a woman who is. Well, she has a she's an amputee. She has a prosthetic lar arm. Um, she's been through a lot of shit. Like her brother's dead. Like her parents are gone. She's dealing with some stuff, and on Halloween night, she's going to go to this old creepy house to unalive herself because she she's dealing with life, okay? But lo and behold, maybe there's uh, three spirits in this <laughs> in this house that, that they all know the woman um, uh, for three reasons, and they maybe blame her because they're dead. So it's Halloween night, and of course it's the one night that they are sort of made flesh again. Um, I don't know, maybe you can see where the story is going. But anyway, <laughs> um, like I said, dark, sexy times. Protect yourself. <laughs> but uh, I had a lot of fun, and I got wrapped into this story, and like I said, I got to read book three, which is releasing today on Halloween. At least that's what it said. I'm hoping. I need to go check. But anyway, um, I had a good time with this. And then I read a really weird one. All these are weird. All of these have been really weird. Well, the carbon jacket were just dark, but the rest, the rest are just weird. Particularly pumpkin surrogacy. Getting pregnant for the sake of a pumpkin patch by Michelle Taylor. This one was weird. Uh, not a fave. Not a fave. I think I gave it like two stars. It was just weird. I don't, mm, I don't understand. So well, our main character is this witch and her, she lives with her grandmother, I guess. And they usually have like a really awesome pumpkin patch for the, you know, for the season, but something happened, you know, rain killed and all the pumpkins or something. I don't know. So she's like using her witchy powers to like try to revive, you know, get pumpkins grown for, you know, in time for the Halloween season. But she does this magic <laughs> But I can't even, I don't even want to say it, y'all. It's just weird. It's just weird. I really wouldn't recommend it unless you just want to read it for the heck of it. Just to see why it's so weird. Okay. <laughs> okay, Played by the Pumpkin Spice Man by L.O.R. Lamarck. It was a pretty fun one, actually. Um, uh, it is a, it's like a, um, this guy who's a college kid. He just, he's like, he's just kind of wanting to get laid. It's Halloween night, honestly. He's just like, ugh. But, you know, it didn't happen. He went to this party and it didn't happen. So he's like, you know, making the sad walk home. <laughs> and and um, <clears throat> so, and so he greets this weird guy, weird kind of guy, you know, as he's walking down the street. And he's like, ah, I must give you this pumpkin. And he's like, eh, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> perhaps he's an alien. Okay. Um, so he takes this pumpkin. I'm like, whatever, dude. Something happens with the pumpkin. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> Maybe he turns into a pumpkin man, and he and the pumpkin man have a little fun. Okay, it's cute and fun. I don't know. <laughs> it was a very short one. It was good. I had a lot of fun with him. 
And then lastly, last night, I finished with the last one, Mummy. Sorry, Mummy. Sorry. I don't, I don't know. What's that name? This is part of a, I think it's called 13 Kinks of Halloween series. Um, these are by La Latrexa Nova. Um, and this one's actually pretty good, too. Of course, problem, our main lady is this teacher, and she had arranged for this field trip for her high school kids to go, like, stay the night in, um, like, a natural history, you know, museum uh, on Halloween night. See, I, I would love to do that. That would be fun. Uh, nobody show, none of the kids show up because they're all punk-ass high school kids. I'm kidding. I, I kid. I kid high school kids. Um... But she's like, well, stamp, you know, so there, there's the two, you know, people that are working at the museum, they're like, well, you know, sorry, nobody showed up. And she's like, well, can I just walk around a little bit? You know, she's like, yeah, we got to finish, you know, closing down and everything anyway. So walk around a little bit and yada, yada, yada. So she sneaks behind the curtain of this new um, exhibit that they're, you know, the museum is installing about some ancient Egyptian like artifacts and this new sarcophagus that was just found and there's a mummy inside of it and all this stuff. And, uh, so something happens. The mummy gets awakened. Anubis shows up. Things happen. I'm just saying. <laughs> so um, if you want to see what mummy sex is about, check it out. It was actually pretty fun too. So I, I just had a really good time with all this. <laughs> And, you know, took my mind out of being sick. Um, yeah, so that's that, that was my day. <laughs> uh, last night, Kelsey uh, did a watch party for us over on her Patreon for Hellraiser. My absolute favorite horror movie. My favorite horror movie. It is perfection. I watch it every, I watch it every Halloween. I try to watch it every, you know, October just because I'll watch it anytime though. Um, I never get tired of watching it. It's so good. It's still so good the effects I, and queen julia she's amazing i love her i love her so much um it was a great time I had a good time watching that one um did i watch anything else yesterday oh we watched we caught up on loki took the opportunity to catch up on loki i think that's it i think that's all we watched because yeah i just Bedged on the couch and red smut all day. <laughs> like you do. Like you do. So today, like I said, it's Halloween. I'm probably just going to do the same thing today. Sit around and, I don't know. Cause you, I'm feeling a little worse today than I was yesterday, actually. Um, so, we'll see. Maybe I'll try to watch some things. Try to get this Halloween movie marathon. You know, I need to check some things off my list. Um, movie or show set during the fall I haven't watched. Watch a remake or a movie that has a remake. A movie that has no people in the movie cover I need to watch. And then a Kelsey suggestion. I was going to watch Suspiria for that, but I haven't had to watch that either. Ugh, I don't know. I don't want to. Maybe we'll watch some things today, too. I'm rambling now, so <laughs> um, we'll see what the day brings. All right. Actually, this morning, I'm going to spend a little bit of time working on my cross-stitching. I really had wanted to get this this witchy ornament finished this month but i'm probably not going to finish it because i've only gotten this far but you know i think i'm gonna work on a little bit while i watch a little booktube i'm watching claude right now um yeah so well, that'll be a little bit maybe a couple of hours this morning doing that all right stopping here because I've kind of gotten a headache so I'm kind of having a hard time focusing on this but I filled in <laughs> this kind of you can tell it's kind of a slightly darker orange I finished filling in that color and I started on this here which is like a candy bag or something like a trick-or-treat bag but oh uh, yeah that's, my eyes are kind of hurting currently watching please read your book very uh underrated channel um I'll link them below check them out because I really enjoy his videos and yeah, all right. Because it finally seems the right time. Um, since I'm 
finally, or not finally, because <laughs> not something I wanted, but you know, have COVID now. I'm gonna think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna read Kissing the Coronavirus. It seems, it seems time appropriate. It seems time appropriate. I'll report back later. No, no. I have read, I have read some crazy things. Sorry, my hair is crazy, whatever. I have read some crazy things in my life. That was really not good. And not even like in a, a funny way where you're like, oh, that's just crazy town. It was fun. It wasn't fun. The writing was. Let me. Oh, uh, mm -mm. no thanks. At least it was only like 14 pages. Mm -mm. Don't recommend. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the street Cause this is a night folks are giving away So many good things to eat